So first thing is that staff should always introduce themselves to a child and parent in a friendly and professional manner. So this will help the uh, parents and patient to be in a good, uh, good cooperation to, to the procedure. So it is preferable for the X-ray tube to be in the correct position. So before starting the procedure, uh, make the arrangements of the procedure and things needed and all the X-ray tube position to be in the correct position so that you can take straightly the patient inside to the scan room area and you can finish the procedure. So you can avoid the distraction of pediatric patient during the procedure. Sometimes we require assisting of both the parents for immobilization for the children in the child groups of infancy and in neonates. So uh, in that condition, we need both the parents to uh, hold the baby for immobilization technique. So always be honest in answering all the questions which arise from the pediatric patient. So this will keep a good rapport with the children during the procedure. So they will be confident with you during the procedure uh, while handling the pediatric patient. And then ensure IV line of the ch uh, child before providing sedation for the contrast procedure. So before uh, so, uh, doing sedation of the pediatric patient in the procedures like CT, fluoroscopy procedures, you can uh, put an IV line uh, before the sedation time because after sedation, if you put an IV line, the uh, there may be chance of waking up of the ch ch children and there is a disturbance for the uh, pediatric patient. So in, and then ensure that IV line should be placed by the technical and expert person to be inserted in the child. Within a one single prick, the IV line should be ins inserted. So that is the main thing for the pediatric patient. So it will not cause harmful to the pediatric patient. So explain the procedure to the child if possible. So early adolescents and middle adolescent period uh, child can understand what the procedure are going to do. And they will also cooperate with the procedure, what you are going to do with the uh, pediatric patients. So clearly explain the procedure to the child. And then when a baby is crying, show some playful things to distract and ensure immobilization. So uh, if you are going to show some uh, distraction things, so the baby can see that and be immobilized in the scan room. Particularly in ill children can become restless and have greater difficulty in cooperating. So this is a sympathetic condition. Uh, in which a kind but firm approach is essential in these uh, procedures so you can handle the patient very uh, softly. And moving on to the X-ray imaging modality. So first thing is uh, you should inform and prepare the patient and accompanying person to hold the children for a immobilization and take a radiograph. So this is the main thing in the uh, X-ray modality. And then make sure operating condition balance both image quality and the exposure. So you should uh, choose the appropriate protocol uh, according to the patient weight and the body build of the patient. So that can choose the good exposure and at the same time you should also balance with the image quality. And then reduce the time of acquisition as much as possible to reduce the motion of the baby. So you should re reduce the MAS that uh, going with the higher MAS station, you can reduce the MAS. So this will help the motion artifacts uh, occur during the pediatric imaging. And use of collimators, there is a two sets of collimators is that you can use the collimators that will uh, reduce the radiation dose and scatter radiation and improve the image quality in the pediatric patients. So unwanted region can be avoided by collimating the uh, X-ray tube. And uses of uh, later pictures and cones will be helpful in this dose giving to the patients. And use of beam restrictor device. So in this condition, you can see the breast shielding of uh, posterior anterior spine with the patient of conjunctive scoliosis being used. So this is a lead aperture. In this lead aperture, you can see it is being used in the collimator uh, box. It is being attached to the collimator box and is used for this particular study. So like this, you can use uh, lead apertures of different uh, sizes and shapes for uh, different studies. And then use of cones, that is a beam restrictor device. You can also uh, use the cone for uh, anterior posterior uh, skull radiograph in the baby. And also ensure earring should be removed uh, when taking the skull radiograph in the pediatric patients. And use of shielding devices in the uh, X-ray procedures. And you can see the male window gonad protection. So this is a window gonad protection used for the uh, hip radiography of birth disease in this uh, baby for uh, gonading, uh, gonad shielding. And this is a female gonad protection, which is staged in the place of uh, pediatric patient for imaging the uh, hip 
uh, in the with this female patient and then x-ray immobilization so in patient uh, we can uh, in x-ray department you should use this uh, separate immobilization devices for uh, handling the pediatric patient and also you should distract with aspects in uh, coming out the aspects of handling the pediatric patient in fluoroscopy so avoid unwanted screening in between procedures to reduce radiation dose to the children so this may reduce the dose which we give to the pediatric patient then uh, example take uh, if you're going to screen in between in the MC procedure for to see the field up of bladder so in that can be uh, avoided by uh, for the pediatric patient to reduce the dose to the given to the pediatric and minimize the length of scan and screening time in international uh, international applications so this also can reduce the dose given to the pediatric patients and reduce the anxiety of the children during the procedure so this will greatly help you in uh, cooperation of pediatric patient through the uh, fluoroscopy procedures and explain the procedure clearly to the bystanders so bystanders may be parents of the child so uh, if you clearly explain to them they can convey the message or they can uh, act according to the procedure what you're going to do with the uh, baby and technologists must know the signs of infants. For example, if a baby uh, with a full bladder gets a stroke, so this uh, this condition mainly comes with the MC procedure, where you are going to infuse the bladder with the contrast. After the full bladder is achieved, the baby will uh, showing the sign of uh, bending his toes. So this can be known, and you can take the immediately uh, catheter immediately out, and uh, you can take the void in case of the pediatric imaging. So these are signs uh, uh, more to be known about the pediatric imaging during the fluoroscopy procedures. And coming on to the CT te technical options to be handled with the pediatric patients. So uh, first thing is reduce MAS according to body weight, diameter and composition of the patients. So this will greatly reduce the dose which will be given as a tailored protocol to the pediatric patients. And then decrease KP for thin small patients in the eye contrast examination like uh, CT angiography, musculoskeletal imaging, etc. So now nowadays all the vendors comes with the uh, pediatric uh, protocols which is being preloaded in the uh, software in the computers so that you can choose the pediatric protocols according to the region you are going to select. So uh, for example, I'm going to select this in the uh, chest routine in the pediatric patient. It comes with the tailored presetted protocol for uh, color coded. You can see the different color coding according to the body weight of the pediatric patient is being given here. So I'm going to select uh, the pink color that is uh, from 6.0 to 7.5 kg uh, body weight of a pediatric patient. So it, it gives a tailored protocol to the pediatric patient uh, that will give optimum dose to the pediatric and uh, that will be giving good quality of images for the pediatric imaging in radiology. And then use spiral scan with a pitch greater than one. So uh, if you use the pitch greater than one, it can reduce the scan time and also it can uh, it decrease the dose given to the pediatric patient. But you should always should be um, you should not always compromise in the image quality by increasing the pitch. That you should be very careful by using increasing the pitch. So always keep the pitch equal to one or else uh, slightly greater than one. So that will be helpful in the imaging of pediatric patient. And use uh, use newer dose reduction strategies like iterative reconstruction, adaptive modulation techniques. Uh, so that will help in the dose reduction of of the dose reduction of the pediatric patient by normal dose what you are giving by the filter back projections. So these are all the uh, advantages by now newer techniques in the uh, CT imaging. And consider low KEP and single AP topography. So by using a low topogram taking by a low KEP and then a use of single topogram, not by taking a both AP and lateral, you can use a single topogram, AP topogram, that could be enough to take a uh, to a CT uh, studies. Uh, replace uh, replace the test bolus and uh, bolus triggering by standard scan delay timing in the uh, contrast imaging in the CT, CT contrast imaging. So this will avoid the time of triggering bolus technique that uses the dose for the each and every slices that we avoid for the pediatric patient. And you should be 
very clear if the timing uh, period is you have been known with the timing period for the pediatric imaging then you can go with this bolus triggering technique or else you can go with the bolus triggering te technique itself that will be good for the imaging so avoid major overlaps when scanning adjacent area with different protocols for example if you are going to image a, pe a pediatric patient with the thorax and abdomen region both in a single study so First, you will be planning for a thorax uh, covering the upper abdomen region to the upper upper border of the thorax. So, in this sense, we are covering the upper region of the uh, abdomen, abdomen abdomen region. But when you are going to plan for the abdomen region, uh, you will be covering from the mid thorax to the uh, lower part of the thing. So, this uh, this may can lead to the excess of dose given to the pediatric patient. So, you can uh, always do adjusting the uh, cover the required area in the adjacent scanning uh, protocols. So, this will be helpful for reducing dose to the pediatric patient. And main responsibility of technologies in radiological imaging of uh, pediatric patient is to improve awareness of need to decrease radiation to the children and plan sedation to the children where, wherever it is applicable. So if you are going to give sedation for the uh, children, it should be applicable. Uh, you are, if you are going to take a CT uh, study, there we can give a sedation. Or you can go into do a fluoroscopy study, there you can go with the sedation, but not with the radiography. So radiography is uh, against imaging. So you can go without sedation. So that should be planned. And pre and post contrast or delayed scans rarely add uh, additional information to the children. But this can increase the radiation exposure by twice or thrice to the pediatric patient. So if you go with the multi-phase imaging, uh, check whether you can give a single phase, uh, whether you can occur in the venous phase or artery phase, or you can reduce some other multi-phases that can be uh, avoid the dose given to the pediatric patients. Okay, And use optimal parameters to acquire good image as well as foster acquisition is needed here.